Hey, welcome to the Dental Elements Podcast. On this episode, we have Jill Wade, and here she is joining us. You look lovely. Hi. I'm mother summer mode. You're what? I'm in mother summer mode. Oh, I love it. That's my mode I'm usually in. Which is super hot here in Texas. Oh, yeah. How hot is it there? Oh, man. Today, I think we're at 104. Oh, you know what's yeah. hot? Texas is hot. I always say that for smile makers because that's hot. one of our sponsors. I'm like, you know what's hot? Well, nice to meet you. We match. We both have uh, pink on, so that's good. Yes, don't we? Yeah. I am wearing my shorts, just my biker shorts. Oh. Well, you look great <laughs> from here up. You look super. I was like, maybe I should change the shirt. I was like, oh, not at all. I like it. It's better, better this way. Well, nice <laughs> to meet you. I've heard lots of good things about you. Girl, we know a lot of the same people. I have yeah. a weird feeling like a lot of the same oh. people. So, let's talk about people. Let's make this episode. Let's talk about, let's talk about I, these people. I'm really good friends with Dr. Uchi. Oh, I love Dr. Uchi. He's great. Great friend. Been friends with him for probably too many years to count. I can see that. You guys have a lot, definitely yeah. a lot in common. That- yeah. And then I've worked with Vanessa Emerson quite oh, a bit. I love her. And then I've been in and out of do quite a bit. I don't uh, like that. I'm sorry. I love do too. I never quite get to really utilize, you know, the camaraderie and the mm. networking as much as I would like to. And that that's a great a whole new should thing today when I saw that I was like yes I must get back involved with that so much more yes they have a phone they have a a coffee every Wednesday morning so I set my alarm this morning but I didn't I didn't get much sleep last night and so I'm like maybe I'll just roll over and get on and listen and I love it and they have one on Tuesdays too and I was gonna see I was gonna ask Aurelia because you're friends with Aurelia too that's why I heard a lot about you from about you yes yeah I met her in Florida at a dental conference and we just hit it off right away it was just Absolutely. I saw her aerosol the yeah mm-hmm. and I was like is that a wine holder and so I was, I was using it to hold my wine glass I love it like it isn't it is tonight <laughs> you guys might have crossed paths as well yeah. she's amazing love that girl we need to get together you're my kind of people I'm your kind of people yeah sounds like you're the ones that keep making it moving keep, it. keep finding yeah. each other you find each oh, other she's yeah. great you guys wrote a book, you guys wrote a book together and we did our little hygiene with heart book. And and then, um, when she was actually living here in Texas, we did a lot more of our podcasts called simplify health, you know, gosh, she's just been so busy. I've been so busy. You know how hard it is to do podcasts, you know, it is, it really does take a lot. And then I'm like, but then I get on there. It's like, Oh, this is, I love it. I love it. I want to just do this. But then as soon as you get off to get back to other things and yeah. I know, but um, she, yeah, she and I have always had just fun brainstorming. Together. Yeah, and Uchi, he's, um, I've been talking to him. We're going to do a couple more, couple more episodes, but you know, he's a night person. And so I'm like, Sunday night. Okay, so I got to find a couple of night times that I can put yeah. a shirt on. Like, <laughs> he, he has so many great topics he can oh, talk yeah. about. He just really is. And he's just so charismatic. And, you know, even if you've heard him before, I guarantee you every time I sit in front of him, and I listen to one of his lectures or whatever, I learned something new. I picked something new up because yeah. he's always got something new. And even if it's the same one, it's not, it's not. Yeah. It's always so good. And he yeah. practices what he preaches too. Like he, he does. He, he lives the, yeah. lives the life. Don't look at me too close. <laughs> not like them. That's me. Right now. My thing is I'm, I've been walking the dog in the morning. I am very proud of myself. That's, so that's my thing. Like I'm doing that. That's a great, I think that's a great way to do it though. Being outside first thing in the morning, tons of science just to show that that's like perfect. I love, yeah, I love being outside, walking outside. And then yesterday on my walk, there's like a guy that's been walking around this park. He didn't have any shoes on. I'm like, that's even better. Like he's, you know, grounding grounding with the earth with the shoes on. I got my little grounding pad right here underneath my desk right now. Oh, you do? Oh, I need one. Yeah. I just bought one the other day. I was like, let's see how grounded I can feel. Does it help? You know what? It's oddly enough, I would think you couldn't feel it at all, but I, I literally think I feel it when my feet are on it. Like I feel something different happening to my feet. Like I can mm-hmm. feel the energy coming up through it. It's pretty cool. Oh, I've tra- yeah. I looked at those before and then I got sidetracked. You know? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I do. So, yeah. so much fun stuff to get sidetracked from, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So what part of Texas do you live in? Basically Dallas. Okay. Dallas Metroplex. Is that, the, well, what, is that the actual city? So I practice in Frisco, Texas, which is a suburb north of Dallas. Okay. And so um, on this episode today, what's, uh, is there any certain topic you want to talk about or just kind of, uh... well, you know, I want to be here just to serve you and serve your listeners. So obviously I've been in dentistry for quite a long time, so I can pretty much talk about any 
subject matter if there's anything major going on that you want to. But right now, we've just been talking a lot about kind of finances and and financial information that people just don't talk about and how stressful that can be. And I think that goes for not only, you know, phys- you know, physicians and the doctors themselves, the dentists, but also our teams. And you know, we just work so hard. Times Especially are just like right now home. too, with everything, everything's just like going up in cost. And then, so then everybody's costs go up and then you have teams that have been there forever. There's, yeah, there's a lot going on for everybody. Yeah. And so, you know, if we, if you want to talk about any of that, we can, I'm, I'm sure. open to anything, my dear. Okay. So uh, Dr. Jill Wade is our guest today on the show. As you heard during the, the announcement, I already did your little, your announcement or your introduction, I should say. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about who you are and what you want people to know about you, whether it's true or not, it's up to you. Yeah. I'll try to stick to the truth. (laughs) Yes, Dr. Jill Wade. I practice in Frisco, Texas. I've been in dentistry for over 25 years and I love it today as much as I loved it when we first got started. It is just a wonderful profession. I think it's a beautiful profession for women and it just gives us so many different opportunities um, to be able to kind of create and design how we want to work, when we want to work and feel really empowered by our, you know, kind of inner purpose, uh, by helping others get what they need and want. And so I just, I can't say enough about dentistry and I'm just super glad to be here with you and all the things you've accomplished and just to have this podcast and to be helping people stay motivated and and happy and inspired, I think it's just wonderful. So kudos to you. you. Yeah. You've had a podcast as well. So you know um, how it's something from the heart, right? (laughs) Right. Almost like birthing a baby, right? It's like writing a book and a podcast is just really um, something that most of us, you know, not all of us are called for, but those of us who are called to do it, it's kind of a, a passion, isn't it? It is. Yes. And you have written a book too. So, you know, how many books have you written? So I have written two and I actually am just finishing one that I'm really excited about. And it's going to be coming up probably actually here in the next couple of months to be ready to get published and out there. Um, This one's taken on a little bit of a different different swing. Most everything else has been truly dental and scientific related. Uh, This one is going to be talking a little bit more about the entrepreneurial side of owning um, a dental business, mostly towards more entrepreneurial thinking women. We have some unique situations that can, can occur for us in our lives that are a little bit different than just a male entrepreneur. And uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of people out there talking about that and, and able to give some of their wisdom and insight. I'm 53 years old, and I would love to allow other people who are younger than I am to hear kind of some of the uh, school of hard knocks things that I've learned and uh, maybe not take them quite so long or so hard to learn some of the lessons I've learned. And there's just not a lot of people out there sharing that information. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, I have a passion. I share that passion with you to share with people or mentor people, like let them know, you know, hopefully if somebody listens, like if we would listen to our parents, you know, <laughs> exactly. So, listen, listen, yeah, exactly. good. Yeah. I was so excited. That's yeah. I'll definitely have to um, have you back on when the book is oh, ready no, but... to share it. And with, with I... I'm all about entrepreneurship as well. That's a passion of mine. And and uh, I'm a woman, but yeah. So tell us a little bit more about the um, entrepreneurship side of, of it then. Like, do you talk about um, the financing part or just the time and the family balancing? Sure. If you want to share, share your top secrets yeah, or what? Absolutely. So like I said, I've been in dentistry for 25 years. So I've pretty much been through every phase of career, you know, as far as starting off early from school, having a lot of debt, being an associate, uh, starting my own practice, having a partnership having a partnership dissolve, then having my own business all by myself for a while, having associates, having partners, like I've pretty much been through it all. And every phase is very unique and different. And, you know, for a lot of years, well, I was, I was a single parent uh, for twin girl with twin girls for about 10 years. And during that 10 year period of time, you know, there were really some big shoes to try to fill, uh, trying to be both mom and dad And uh, I always just was working so hard and so hard to just try to add like an additional income into our family, you know, um, our our family financial background, just because that's, that's what I just kind of felt like society was telling me, like, 
you're a good, strong family if you have a two person family income. And as a single parent, that was hard to do, right? So I just kept working so hard to figure out how to do that. And I'd open up another business and I'd create another entrepreneurial idea. Well, all that did was honestly make me work harder and didn't always quite give me the end result that I was looking for because I was investing so much money into those new businesses. And so finally, I just started to realize that, hey, there has to be another solution. Like there has to be another way to do this. And as I just kind of grew and grew into looking into other, you know, financial opportunities, I realized that all the answers were already right there in front of me. It was just to do things differently and and actually have more of a tax strategy, a tax reduction strategy, debt reduction strategy that worked better for me, have my assets work for me, you know, better. And that the money really already was right there in front of me. I just wasn't um, hearing these opportunities or these options from the people and the teams that I had around me. They were great. They were telling me all about 401ks, which were, you know, fabulous. And everybody was like, put as much money into those as you can. All great things, but it didn't diversify me enough. I still had all my eggs in one basket, the dental office, right? So when the pandemic hit, and that practice was taken away from me for three or four months as they shut us all down. My life just kind of went to a screeching halt. And I would have never guessed that could have happened to me in a million years. And I certainly wasn't prepared for it. But man, did I get prepared after that? Because I thought there is no way I'm ever going to let something like this happen to me again. And really at that point, my whole attitude kind of changed from having a business that was a you know, creating a lifestyle for me and that the business that I was going to continue to create was going to be an investment for me. And that investment was going to allow me to diversify into other things, get more eggs into my basket so that I could be much more resilient or tolerant of whatever was to come, you know, in the near future or in the further future that, you know, we, we all are experiencing all those ups and downs every day. Right. 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 And so now you have a passion to um, share like financial secrets or yeah. strategies or ways to. So can, give us uh, what did you learn or what's working for you? How did what did you do? Yeah, super question. So um, obviously, if you if you do own your own business and you have the opportunity and it makes sense to, to have a brick and mortar, which most dentists and dental offices obviously have a brick and mortar. My main thing is, you know, stop leasing and get into commercial real estate and, and know your area. You usually know your area very well. So you know which areas are growing, which areas are going to hold their value. And so commercial real estate and even larger than what your physical office can be is great because then you can have renters who can then help you pay for your asset. Um, so I that's one of my first biggest, you know, things to talk to people about is try to get out of leasing. And even if it's, you know, my employees, I, I try to get them out of leasing apartments and things like that as soon as possible into, into homes so that they're taking their money and they're using it to, to grow an asset for them. And it may not seem like a quick fix, it may be a, a longer solution, but it's a great solution. And I really just don't see people, even in today's times with the interest rates and things like that, I still think it's a great, great option. If you're paying it down, you're also, it's increasing the value. I mean, most, yeah. likely. And most likely. Most likely. Yeah. Most likely. And you're creating your equity in it. And eventually you can use that in a different way or use that as leverage to borrow money for something else. Right. Right. So commercial real estate has been really, really good to me, especially in Frisco, Texas, where I practice. When I first started practicing there, there was only 14,000 people. Now there's over 200,000 people. And so wow. the area has just really kept its, well, not just kept its uh, value. It's certainly grown its value. So you wish we'd have bought the real estate back 25 um, years ago. Like, that's why so I'm now. here because I want to get these people secrets faster. If somebody would have just told me, do whatever you can do to buy property back then, just didn't understand the, the, the long-term value in that, or I would have done everything I could have done at that moment in time to have done exactly what you just said. Mm -hmm. So my whole goal is just to try to give people, uh, you know, a hand up, not a hand out per se, but hey, if you can take this information and do something with it earlier in your life than I did and let time work for you, then it's, you know, it's 
it's a blessing. It'll be a big blessing. We also went uh, more towards something that's, uh, you may not have ever heard of it before, but it's called infinite banking and it's using whole life policies to act like a bank. So let's say you have extra money, but you have it sitting in a savings account. It's really not doing all that much for you, except, you know, maybe making you a little bit of money. Um, on making the- you think you have money. Yeah, making spend. exactly. But if you put that same kind of money into what they call a whole life policy written very well for you, it's still going to act like a savings account and you can pull money in and back in into it and out of it at your leisure. So if there's cash flow issues going on in your life or in your business, kind of helps you with that cash flow. It's kind of like your your own little personal you know, nest egg, uh, egg nest. What am I trying to say? Nest, nest yeah. egg. That's it. There we go. And, um, but on the same side, you have this policy, this life insurance policy that is also growing in value. So you get to use your money in there multiple times and you get that. It is so weird that nobody talks about this. And it is one of the best things that I have found for small Mm -hmm. business owners and entrepreneurs to use. It just, it's a, it's also very great for asset protection as well. So we just, we love whole life policies and we we're really wanting to get to the point where we can explain that better to people and, and let them use them. Um, it almost sounds like real estate where you're paying into yeah. it, but you can borrow from it and pay exactly. yourself back. Like, and right yeah, now, I wonder, yeah, I wonder why people don't. Cause I've heard a lot of, you know, some yeah, this is how talk about term life or, but just yeah, kind of. Exactly. Just, well, terms yeah. good. If you need to have something to put up for, you know, your commercial real estate, because it's affordable, but other than that, it's not really doing anything for you. And so Mm -hmm. I love to let people know about these other ways. Disney started his whole empire from a whole life policy. And so there's lots of people, excuse me, the lady that started Pampered Chef, that's how she did it. There's a lot of people, if you really pull back the the layers of how they started their businesses Mm -hmm. that have started them this way. Yeah, interesting. I love watching those movies and learning about how people started the business. And I love, those are my favorite. Yeah. So great. Yeah. So we love things like that. And, you know, for most of us, I don't care if you do own your own business or you own a little side hustle business or you own a big, you know, multi million dollar business. I've just realized that for the most part, people do not really know their numbers. They don't really, really know their numbers. They don't know how much. Well, they really don't even know, you know, those little things that you can print out from QuickBooks called a PL, a profit and loss statement, and a balance sheet. They really don't understand what kind of juicy, good information is sitting inside of there because they're not accountants. We weren't trained to be accountants. We were trained to be dentists. We were trained to be hygienists. We were trained to be assistants. And we weren't ever really trained on how to know our numbers and look in our QuickBooks and see what those numbers mean. And so for me, it's like I grew up in this world that like talking about money or how much you had or how much debt you had was like taboo. Like we don't talk about that around the dinner table with people. We should, but we don't. And Mm so just really trying to create a community and environment where it is okay to talk about that. And it is okay to say, that doesn't make sense to me. I don't even know what that means. What is a PNL? I, I know my accountant gets me one. I wouldn't look at it and know if it was right or wrong. Like, what does it tell me? And so we're really just trying to open up some of those conversations and say, hey, it's okay that you don't know that, but here's what you do need to know. And here's just at least a certain level of knowledge that that would help you make better decisions now and in the future for your business or your family. You got to, you got to understand like, what, what are your expenses? Hate to say the word budget, but let's talk about a budget and just at least so that you know what you have to have coming in to actually make your ends meet. We call that BAM when we're talking about the dental practices. You have to know what your bare ass minimum BAM is for your practice so that you always know that that's the very lowest number that you could possibly go to from a collection standpoint, because anything below that, it's going to be a direct hit on the owner. And if that goes to start. Exactly. Or they get very, very stressed out. And then who does that trickle down effect go to? Right. It goes right down the line 
through, through the business, it can really, you know, suck the energy and the flow out of taking care of patients. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're trying not to do. People love what they do. They want to take care of patients, right? They don't want to think about cash flow issues and all that kind of stuff. But if you don't know your numbers, it's really hard to prepare. And I'm just a big person, same thing in dentistry. Do we want to be preventive or do we want to be reactive? Well, I think a lot of us want to be preventive in nature, right? Right. And that's what we're encouraging our patients to do. It's the same thing in business. We want to be preventive. We don't want to be reactive. We want to be preventive. And the best way that you can do that is just knowing your numbers. But sometimes you got to kind of do that with somebody who honestly isn't kind of an accountant and a financial guru because they, they just think about it in a completely different way. They're not in our shoes. They don't totally think exactly like we do as small business owners. Yeah. And being a dentist, like, I don't know how you guys do it. Just watch, you know, doing patient care, like as a hygienist, doing patient care. And at the end of the day, you're just exhausted. Yeah. Your dentist going to go sit on your desk, you know, in between patients and whatever, drink your slurpees and file your nails. No, yeah, there's exactly. a lot going on to get to run a business and do that. That's like two full-time jobs right there. It really, so, like, it really is. Yeah, and, and you understand that for people. And sometimes they don't do either one too well when we get overwhelmed, yeah. right? So and so it's just, some crabby, nice. the stress, like I get it crabby when I get stressed. Stress. Yeah. It is stress. And you know, we all have it and it all comes and goes. And unfortunately right now with the way the world is, you never know how it's going to be tomorrow. Like everything's kind of seems like it's just up and down and everything's moving so fast and so quick mm -hmm. that my biggest piece of advice to people these days is just like, Hey, now is the time. Now is the time to have intention, intention of doing something about whatever it is that you can control. Because the more things you feel like you can control good or bad, you actually have less stress. It's when we don't feel like we have any control over anything is when we actually get more stress. And so it's kind of sounds counterintuitive that it doesn't matter what it is. The more things you feel like you can control, the better life feels. Yeah. Or as you give up control and someone else is going to control it for you, it's not going to be good. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Or business or, or anything. Right. Right. And with the, you know, it, and things aren't going to get cheaper. So it's like, Oh, everything's so expensive right now. We'll do, do, you really think it's, has bread ever gone down after it's gone up? No, it's going to get more expensive. It's not going to, it's not going to go down. So we need to rise up and get there and learn how to live there and yeah. And work together, help and each work other, together. like get, you know, yeah, educate each and other. And I think too, you know, for a lot of business owners, sometimes I think they think uh, too much transparency is not good for the team, or maybe they're embarrassed to be transparent that you know, the practice isn't making enough to be fully profitable because all the team sees is what's coming in. Right? I just think you're, you're rich because they see you're that big checks coming out from the, the insurance money. companies. Yeah. yeah. It's not true. It's not true. There's a lot By of the way, they're so stressed out. They're, they're rich. I saw, yeah, they right. got a checkbook. I saw that. Yeah. They don't realize how much is going out. And yes. so it is important, I think, for certain aspects of the practice to be more transparent to the team so that they understand because if they can understand, anybody can understand, bam, kind of in a budget, even for their own household, then, then they can be a part of the solution. And once they feel like they can be part of the solution, they understand their why behind their job and how it plays into the overall practice. I think you get a lot better buy-in. The culture and the practice is a lot um, more team, team oriented. And then we just have a lot of happy, happy employees and, and team members. And then we have happy patients. And, and I think it's easy to say that's all we want really. That's the best advertising. Yeah. And I worked in a practice like that. That's what I got in love dentistry because I was working for a doctor like that as well. We knew all the numbers. I mean, so you felt like it was your business because you want it to do good. And so it's everybody's baby. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, this, you could sell it and you're, you're going to make it a little bit better, but you know what? So are they like in the, the whole process. And the patients, like just having a happy team, honestly, the energy in the office, it, to me, I, maybe I'm just weird, but it attracts patients. But you went to some place and you could tell if everybody runs and hides or nobody wants to help you. You're not going to buy anything. You're going to go someplace where their energy is good and they want, they're welcoming and they're there and they want to help you. The team's happy, not where they're just, you know, unhappy and scaring people away. And so having a happy, less stressed dentist helps with that. Are you frozen or are you just like posing? Hello. Well, we're going to take a little intermission break, and um, I just wanted to thank Smile Makers for sponsoring this episode. 
Yeah. Oh, there she is. There she's back. Okay. I was going to do a little, little commercial break. Free too. I'm sorry. I don't know. I, I froze. It must be so tantalizing and such exciting information we were giving that it just. I know. It, oh, we're talking about energy. There you go. It might be my internet. I don't know. So anyway, yeah. So I, I th think it just it lifts, makes everybody a better place to work. Everybody's happier to come to work. It, everybody does better. And who doesn't want to have a happy workplace, right? Which sounds funny because you're talking about numbers, but at the same time, I don't think you mean you're not only talking about business. Like sometimes in morning huddles, you'll go over numbers. Yeah, but you, you need to have it be a perspective of patient's health and going over how you can help the patients, you know, but understand it is a business. But when you have that flow and that, that knowledge that everybody has, then I personally feel then the money flows with that. If you're going in every day with the only thought process of I got to sell, 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 it's almost like you're deflecting the flow of that business coming to the practice, right? Mm -hmm. And when you, when you go in there every day with a positive mindset of abundance and not lack, then guess yeah. what? That's what they feel. Then yeah. they know your treatment planning from what's best for them. And then they're able to say, yes, I would like that type of treatment. And, and really and you're, that you're helping them, them more and because if you're, if I'm thinking, oh, I got to sell, I got off from fluoride and, and you're like, oh, you, do you want this? It's going to cost whatever. You're not selling for one thing. You're not helping them either because you're afraid to say it. But if you really like, oh, this will really help you benefit you. You're helping them, but yeah, it's selling, but no, it's, you're actually, yeah, you're helping them at the same time. So it's just getting that understanding and balance together. And Absolutely. Flow, which you remember they're coming for your expertise. They are coming for you to share your expertise. And if you mm -hmm. don't, then you're the one that's actually not doing your job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's up to them if they take that advice or want to do the treatment or not. But if you don't tell them, that's awful. I know we can talk for hours and nobody it's wants to listen to us talk for hours. But so do you, yeah. so with the books, I know we're not really here to talk about the book. I just brought it up because you're talking about the book, but um, do you offer coaching for, do you offer some kind of coaching we services? Or You can go to Progressive Finance. They can kind of check that out on Facebook or Instagram. They can go to the website, check it out. We are going to start to have a lot of awesome information. We're going to do some private kind of Facebook group uh, courses and teaching. I think that's a great place to start because, you know, we just want to give of our knowledge and, and let people um, start to join our community and start opening up conversations. And then we're going to offer more and more things as we go along. Yes, exactly. Well, yeah, I'd love to be involved in that somehow, some way, or I would love um, support too. you. So let's definitely meet again. And, and uh, if not in person, maybe I'll see you at the do retreat this year. If um, you're Absolutely. able to make it there, and if not, Absolutely. definitely when you have your book come out, let's do another episode and share some, some insights. That would be great. Yes. I think that'd be wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome.